Greetings YouTube, Sega Zombie here and welcome to another Sega Wall Lockdown Isolation Special. How are we all coping guys? I hope you're all well and safe. Bit of a different video this one, I'm standing up, showing an angle of the Sega Wall that I don't normally, for good reason, finally I've managed to track down one of these white bookshelves. Now I get all these from Arbos. They're about 35 quid, and since the lockdown, I've not been able to source one. But finally, Argos have come good. They had one in stock, so I've picked that up. And um, yeah, I just thought I'd be different to start the video off and show my progression through the day in altering um, the Sega wall and starting to get it to how I want it to look. Because um, like I've mentioned, I'm just not happy about this section and with the Sega Saturn being the main focus I want out of this cabinet, I'm thinking maybe uh, we're going to put one of these white bookshelves up here, get the Sega Saturn in it, and I've got some other ideas that I thought might make it all look better. And at the end of the day, I've got to get the B&O set up in here. I want a permanent home for the Sega Saturn and a permanent home for the Dreamcast. Oh yes, we've got some... Awesome Dreamcast content coming soon, guys, in this lockdown special. Um, so, yeah, I'm going to jump cut now, guys, um, and I'll be behind the camera a bit and talk through a little bit of what I'm going to do. So, yeah, here's the 25 kilo bookshelf that's got to be installed. Um, I'll, I'll assemble that real soon, guys. But, yeah, I'm kind of wanting these bookshelves to theme across this way. Now I'm thinking I need at least another two um, bookshelves along here so I can house these better because I'm not happy with them being double stacked and in that shelf. It's just not ideal shelf. And what I'm thinking about doing is actually cutting this shelf down because um, it fits the B&O really nice. And behind these units, I actually discovered that I've got a power supply. So what I'm thinking about doing is maybe cutting this down. Um, yeah, getting rid of that bottom section, cutting it down. Hopefully it don't all fall apart on me. And it will just make it of a bit of a, a more sort of better gaming height to play. Because I found the B&O sitting on it as it is now. It's just slightly too high. So I'm hoping I can cut that down. And then with the new bookshelves, have a proper home for the Japanese Sega Saturn stuff. Um, which I'm hoping that's what we're going to go through next is the Japanese stuff, guys. Yeah, I'm not happy with the Master System in sort of like a makeshift bookshelf there. I think that will be... I'll probably keep this bookshelf and probably have some of my more vintage stuff on it. Maybe my Coleco, stuff like that on there. But yeah, we're going to take that out. The Dreamcast, the full UK PAL set, all sits lovely and snug in this shelf. So what I might do is move that shelf down to the far end here. Just push my sofa along slightly so that will fit in there nicely. Um, but yeah, this wall, you know, it's just not how I want it, guys. And hopefully I can get it that way. We've got a, a random... Um, cupboard there which is god awful but that houses loads of loads of crap in it um, yeah full of stuff nothing too interesting I don't think my mega CDs in there my uh, multi mega is in there waiting for repair loads of um, blank discs with games on and the like it's all the stuff that's just hidden away really yeah the Super Nintendo <laughs> stays hidden behind a drawer. But yeah, and in the cupboard section, it's all the Coleco, Kong Man, all that kind of stuff. And I want it on display. So yeah, that's going to go eventually. I dug out of uh, storage my um, little Sony monitor. Absolutely love this monitor. I picked this up from a charity shop. That I actually thought it was just a standard computer monitor. It's not. It's actually a proper little Bravia TV lovely picture on it. it it's really nice for the dreamcast so i might try and incorporate that charity shop three pound bargain that was and yeah then i've just got yeah another storage box there 
bit battered, needs replacing, but yeah, I've just got loads of stuff scattered everywhere, and I want it more in sync with how I've got the Mega Drive stuff, guys. Right, guys, so I've moved the sofa slightly over, moved loads of stuff out of the way. I'm hoping the Dreamcast shelf will fit nicely in that gap there on the end. I think that's going to look better there. Um, so, yeah, that's how far we've got so far. Still got to assemble that though. The fun part now, move and Dreamcast games. Horrible job this because it, all of you out there that collect Dreamcasts know you've only got to look at these the wrong way and yeah, they smash. <laughs> so what I'm gonna do is move all of the delicate stuff, all the big box stuff. It's just gonna be so much better when I've got it how I want it just so I can display it all better, really, guys. Because it just feels so cluttered around here. Really does. So, the crazy taxi car that always gets a comment. We'll show it off. Put that out there safe. The Dreamcast watch. An absolutely awesome book, this. I, I remember showing this in a video um, a long time ago now. But it's the Yu Suzuki Gameworks Volume 1. Absolutely fantastic book. Glorious art um, work in there of all of Yu Suzuki's famous arcade machines. And then it's got a Dreamcast disc in there, guys, um, with all, all of the games on. So you can play them on your Dreamcast. Absolutely fantastic book. I think it goes for a pretty penny these days. I managed to source this off a collector locally, which was great a few years ago now, and he done me a tremendous deal on that. So, absolutely love that book. Extremely hard and desirable to get hold of, say the Bass Fishing box set. One that took a little bit of damage moving in here. A little bit of um, the bubble wrap that I wrapped it in. Had some tape that I didn't see and look at that. Oh, that knocks me a bit. <laughs> the Planet Ring, one of the last box sets I needed to get for the full set. So we'll put that up there. And then down the bottom here, guys, I don't think you're gonna see it on the camera, but I've got my fight pad. I can never pronounce it. Um, and yeah, then all of my Japanese and American Dreamcast games which I'm just going to move those out. And what I'm hoping to do, I'm going to be daring, I think, guys. I'm going to try and move this out without taking everything off. Will I be able to do it? Oh. Risky. This could be an interesting video. If this goes peak Tom. Oh. Am I nervous? Just a bit. <gasps> so let's just hope this goes in that gap. Let's move the camera around for you guys. The moment of truth. Whoa, there are rattling round in there. We might have a couple of cracks. So close. Almost 
Oh. You watch, I'm going to get it in there and I'm not going to like it. I've just realised it actually sticks out further. Oh, what do we reckon, guys? What do we reckon? I think that might be alright there. What do we think? Sticks out a little bit, but not too much. Obviously that will run in there. Then once we move the master system out, that's the next job. We can um, then assemble this and get that in that corner. There's the master system bookshelf out now. So we've got a nice gap to put one of these in. And then that will house, at least it will house the PAL satin. I think a lot better. And then we can sort all this out and then work out how the B&O setup is gonna go here. Because behind here, if I remember rightly, when I checked the other day, yeah, we have, we have a plug socket there. Finally, I've got the bookshelf um, together. Hate flat pack furniture, I don't know about you guys. I've tried to space it the same as the Mega Drive layout, really. So we've got a fairly decent sort of coverage of the shelf. A lot wider at the bottom. Maybe that will be Master System, I don't know yet, guys. But yeah, the shelf is up. Um, now to put it into place. worried about is the depth just as I thought the depth we had of that I've now got to move everything this way oh man I'm not looking forward to that so I need to get stuff down from the top and shuffle this along guys got to look perfect though it's got to look good so, I'm going to move everything down. Oh, get the Mega Drive down. So, what else have we got up here? My Minty Samba set. Absolutely glorious condition, that. The Mega Drive mouse of my Sega brother, David Jameson. Little Sega sign I got. Make sure that can't be damaged. And I want to see how easy it's going to be to shuffle this down if I can. That's it. It's not going to join perfect. There is going to be a gap. Just been how how I'm square all this, but just so it looks a little better. I think that will do there. The master system down. Get the mirrors down. I absolutely love these that I got from Revival off Rob. Amazing them. They still need a proper home. Once I've got everything how I want it, I imagine I'm going to put loads of art up. Just getting it, tweaking it now, guys. Tweaking it. Another Mega Drive there. Let's see if we can move this now. Oh, this one's heavier. But she's moved. Right. Oh, that's empty, so I'm not too fussed about that. It's just the empty box. Oh, move that up like so. And there we go, guys. Now for the fun part of emptying the satin and getting it into the shelves. Right, so the master system, really don't know what I'm gonna do with that at the minute. So that's gonna be moved down here. And then we need to focus on filling this up with all this juicy satin. Not gonna put any order to it yet. You guys that like 
to put things into alphabetical order. It's going to do your OCD in now because I am just literally bunging everything up. Till I get exactly how I want it. I'm not going to bother putting it in any type of order. I have it in my order, my madness. <laughs> so. I think what I'm going to do is have all the first gen cases and like so really digging the satin again at the minute oh how much how much fun have I had on the satin it's been amazing Look at that, they look so much better already, don't they? The old Street Fighter the movie in a traditional Mega CD case. Always a bit of a bug bugbearer, that one. But just a random one, so what I might do at the end is have that on display. there in the lovely big case. Hoping they all fit along there, I don't think they're going to. Then the Panzer set, which I showed off in a recent video. Dumboid Benboid houses Panzer 1 and 2. Absolutely adore that. I think what I'm going to do is put them together along with Panzer Dragoon Saga. One of my pride and joys, so put that there. And then we move on to these awful chunkier boxes. I'm not a fan of these guys. The EA cased games like um, Road Rush. What I might do is put them like that because they're quite chunky. Like so. Is that working? And then the second gen cases next to it oh burning rangers another classic that is a great game just so underappreciated when that come out because by then the satin was kind of dead in the water massive shame that steep slope sliders another late release on the satin great snowboarding game the Mighty Marvel Superheroes, another classic. Frankenstein through the eyes of the monster. It's quite a difficult one to get hold of. It's got the actor that played it in the original film. Deep Fear, the last Sega Saturn PAL release that. And then Fighters Mega Mix, which I'm just going to bung there for now because I think I'm going to rearrange them slightly. So that's the Saturn stuff, the PAL Saturn right there. Next job is to start clearing my Dreamcast back. Shen moves back where they belong. The hey, 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 crazy taxi car. Needs a bit of a dust. And then we've got Planet Ring. I'll put that on the bottom as well. Right, so this next. Right, so the next shelf, what are we going to do? Well, I'm going to put, I think. To begin with, all the satin big box stuff for now, I'm going to put on top of this my minty PAL version 1. 
absolutely chuffed to pieces with this. It's in great condition. Um, yeah, and it's minty inside, so I don't tend to very often get that out. And then we've got a fighting stick, SS fighting stick. It's a really nice um, arcade stick, that. A hoary one. Hoary. Yeah, we've got the good old birch cop. I'll just put that there for now. That brings us on lovely to the Japanese Saturn games. What I'm going to do is just quickly go through them with you guys for this video. Then the next video, well, we don't know. We'll see what I can edit together and um, what we end up with. But um, I'm definitely going to pick five Japanese Sega Saturn games to share with you guys. Um, but for this video, what we'll do is we'll go through all of them. There's not that many, so we'll quickly go through. I've got Outrun, which is absolutely fantastic arcade port. Of, of a classic as we all know and the benefits of having the Japanese release is that it's um, 60 frames per second actually runs smoother than the arcade machine I believe then we've got Albert Albert Odyssey don't know anything about this one guys it came in a bundle and then we've got um, the lovely big box real belt Fatal Fury Love these boxes. I definitely want to add more of those to the collection. We've got um, X Men vs Street Fighter. Again, lovely, glorious big box. Then another SNK classic. We've got Metal Slug. I really like the Saturn. It's the Saturn version of Metal Slug that I ever first ever played. It really was great conversion. And then we've got Marvel Superheroes vs. Street Fighter. And then we've got Vampire Saviour. Another great 2D fighter. Don't get talked about enough. And um, yeah, then we're, we're on to the sort of like normal stuff now, guys. We've got e bockers No idea, guys. These all come in a bundle, like I said. Then we've got Oh, this is a good one, this one. I'm trying to remember what this game is called. The, um, it's like um, Puyu, I said Puyu Puyu. It's a Puyu Puyu game. Absolutely great little game, that. I knew it would come to me eventually. And then we've got Strikers 1945. Great um, arcade port. Good shooter. Virtual Cop 2. Robo Pit, I believe that was released. How was on it? Then we've got a biggie here, guys. Elevator Action 2 Returns. Paid a pretty penny for this. But a fantastic game. I, I adore that game. And we've got Layer Section 2, another shooter. Love Layer Section. What was that called on the PAL release? Gravity something, was it? Galactic Attack, that's it. It's the original. Then we've got the brilliant Tato Chase HQ plus SCI Special Criminal Investigation. Wish it had the English um, voice acting on it though. I really do. It's the only thing that's missing from that. It's a brilliant port. We've got Dead or Alive. Dragon's Force. Again, these come in a bundle. One of the many fishing ones, World Fishing. Chaos Control, an on-rail shooter. I kind of enjoyed the first few levels of that and then it just gets absolutely mind-numbingly boring. It really does. Daytona USA. Race Driving. Sega Rally Championship. I really want to get the plus version. It allows you to use the Analog 3D controller. Fighting Vipers, which we've talked about. Galaxy Fight, another game that wasn't released. So, well, actually, it did get a PAL release, but it's not talked about often. Not a bad little game. Then we've got Exhumed, the Japanese release. Um, Sing. Oh, I'm, I'm going to butcher this. 
Sengoku Ace Episode 2. All I know is it's an absolutely fantastic game by Atlas. Um, a lovely shooter. Worth checking out, guys. We've got Victory Goal 96. Another Victory Goal. Alone in the Dark 2. A golf game. The original Clockwork Knight. We've got Gradius the Deluxe Pack. Great little set that is. If you like Gradius or Nemesis, as I remember it. Vampire Hunter. We've got one of the many versions of Bomberman. The original Virtual Cop. Winning Post 2. Panzer Dragoon. An absolutely awesome side scroll and beat of this um, Dungeons and Dragons collection. Wish I could get it in the big box, but crikey, that goes for a hefty penny now. But yeah, an absolutely two fantastic arcade side scroll and beat em ups. A bit more in depth than Golden Axe, but that, that type of thing, guys. Fantastic game that. Can actually move that along with the other big boxes. And then we've got the Game Paradise, a really cool little uh, the vertical shooter. Really, really fun game. Um, really cute. And yeah, you kind of play in a, in a sort of arcade, if I remember right. You get a lot of different arcade machines and, and Japanese fruit machine type things to fight. A cool concept. Then we've got Darius Gaiden. Not a bad shooter, that. Oh, and what is this one? This is another good one, and I can't think of its name. It's eluded me, guys. I can't think, but it's an EA release. I can't think what it's called. That I've got a great shooter, nonetheless. <laughs> then we've got Dodon Apache. Fantastic bullet hell shooter, that. Then we've got another Sega Ages. We've got Fantasy Zone, which didn't get a UK release. And then one I promised that I'm going to show in my next Saturn gameplay um, footage for Dave. Retro games play badly. And that's Gale Racer. Port of the arcade game. Then we've got the mighty Vasugan. Absolutely gorgeous shooter that. Really is an amazing game. Then we've got Assault Suit Lanos 2. A good little mech sort of run and gun. Really nice game. Then we've got Panzer Dragoon Saga, Japanese. Virtual Fighter. Another awesome Sega Ages release, Power Drift. An awesome conversion of Power Drift, this. And again, unfortunately, didn't make it to the UK. And then we've got the Mighty in, in the Hunt. Glorious, glorious shoot of this. Really do enjoy the graphic. The graphic style is very similar to Metal Slug, but it kind of you kind of think that submarines and all that them sort of games can be slow paced boring, but no, this is an awesome game. Love it. Then we've got Panzer Dragoon 2 and the side scroll and beat em up, which is mega fun. And I can't think of its actual English translation, its English name, but it's a really fun side scroll beat em up really wacky game you know you you end up in the in the stomach of a whale fighting other like fish creatures it's, it's absolutely bonkers and a really great game worth checking out guys so there you go we've got the japanese saturn in there now we've got the pal saturn and we're finally clearing a lot of what we need to clear i'm just wondering now if this master system We'll go in along the bottom. Eventually, I want to get another one of these shelves just for the master system. But until that time, we're just going to house them here. We'll
So that's another shelf. Out of the way now, and like I said, I'm going to the Coleco Vision will go nicely on this shelf once I get sorted. But I can't remember if you can see all this, guys. But yeah, you can a bit. Let's move the camera. So there we go, guys. We've now got a better corner coming here. And then my next job will be to try and cut this unit down slightly and make it into my console, kind of like a mini desk, I suppose, stand. The B&O is going to go on here. Then I'll have the, the Saturn and the Dreamcast, and maybe some more consoles even, set up on the B&O right here. This will be gone eventually. So will that stuff in the corner, and we'll have another one of these, and it's right next to it there, I'm hoping. So yeah, it's getting there, guys. It's getting there. Right, guys, we're in the kitchen. I'm now going to attempt to cut, to saw this unit. Um, yeah, it's basically the original unit that I show with the um, Sega Saturn game was originally in it. Like I said, it sits slightly too high. So what I'm going to do is, if I just take the camera down so we can see, I'm going to actually cut along the legs of this so it sits flat on the floor. I'm hoping, I'm being a bit conservative with my cutting, I'm not the most skilled at DIY. So I'm going to just cut that um, and then just see if that sort of like few inches helps with the height. Um, it's either going to work or it's going to be firewood, boys. So let's see. I'm hoping this will be quite simple. Whoops. So yeah, I'm just going to literally line along this and cut, guys. So get the saw the best I can. I need to try and find where that edge is. So I'm going to say along there. So yeah, we're just basically going to cut this section here out along the proper line because I pissed up with the the saw. Let's see what happens, guys. Feeling I've cut too close. Ah, you have. I'm not judge that, guys. Yeah, I've ballsed it. Ballsed it completely up. Should have gone from this back line. Right, so what I'm going to do, turn it around. I think this is going to be firewood. Yeah, we've definitely cut into that. <laughs> oh my god. Right, let's turn it over. Learn from my mistakes. And we're gonna cut from this side. Now. I 
hoping that this is going to set up, guys. I've got this all on camera for you lot. Let's have a look. There we go, guys. Not the prettiest. But I'm sure once I get it back in the Sega wall set up, it looks pretty level. I'll check. I'll check it with a spirit level. I reckon I'm out a bit. <laughs> right here we go, guys. It's housed. I'm hoping because there's the old Sega zombie chair there that that's the right height. That was a mission, guys. Something so simple, so easily fucked up by my my very unskillful um, carpentry hands. <laughs> B&O, some power leads, and we're going to set up um, the consoles in their ho rightful home. First up though, let's get that B&O and see if it sits comfortably. Right, it's, it's still not an ideal height really. I'd prefer it to be a little bit lower, but I'm not going to cut this anymore because once I go past that bottom shelf, I think it's going to become really flimsy. And yeah, that's better though. It's taken what, about a good five, six inches off the bottom of that. So it's a lot lower than it was. I think that will do for now. I'm just gonna have to sit on a pillow <laughs> if it's that bad. But yeah, I'm happy with that for now. So the new home for the B&O for now, eventually there'll be another bookshelf in its place and I'll slide that along. So yeah, now time to set up guys. So first up, we're gonna put the Sega sat in here. Um, then we're gonna have the OG Xbox at the bottom. This one's fully modded with coin ops. So we'll put that down there. I'll have that on the bottom shelf. And then we're gonna have the mighty Dreamcast in the middle I think. It might even sit alongside the satin and I can get something else out maybe. Oh my original launch Dreamcast. The only original console I have left. Yeah it sits lovely next to the next to the satin there, so I'm going to put that there, move the Xbox up one, like so. Oh, it's amazing to, at least I still have one of my original consoles left, guys. So we'll put all that back in there with a the packaging. 4000 series, I think it is. Um, <clears throat> I think it only has one or two um, SCART sockets in the back, so I've got a SCART switcher box. Pick this up off a booter for like 50p a pound. Does the job, but it's not too bad. So we're going to plug that in the back of the TV. Saves having to go around the back of the TV if we set them all up there. Maybe how's that somewhere? around the back so it's easy to get to. That's what it's all about for me. Easy to play. Um, so yeah, you ain't gonna wanna see me putting all the wires and that in. What I'll do is I'll come back when it's all set up, guys. So here we go then, guys. Finally. We have the B&O in place on my makeshift unit, which I've hacked to pieces. To get it to fit, we've got the Dreamcast set up, the Sega Saturn, my original Xbox modded with coin ops. I've drilled holes, it isn't pretty, I need to clean it up, I know, but um, drilled holes into the backing so I can get the wires through. And then the bottom shelf temporarily has got the pads for those consoles, the Dreamcast keyboard and the like. Um, but I think the Coleco is going to be ho home there as well eventually but it's getting a bit later now but yeah so there's the xbox running coin ops oh if i hit the right one there's the sega saturn looking absolutely glorious on the bno i love the saturn on the bno 
it looks fantastic guys it really does and then finally with the switcher box around the back here a flick of a switch we've got the Dreamcast which has gone a bit green dodgy scart lead I'm used to having the Dreamcast set up on VGA um, so I need to get a better scart lead it's a little loose but look at that looks pretty good and the one thing you can't beat with the B&O is the sound I absolutely love the sound of this set pumps it out so yeah a job well done today guys we've got the new bookcase in everything set out there more importantly the Dreamcast is now set up guys so some more lockdown videos coming about the Dreamcast I'm going to do another video it's getting late now but we're going to focus I've shown the, the Japanese games in my collection on the Saturn um, but I'm going, to I'm going to highlight five of those and we'll have a bit of a play have a blast on some of the games but yeah at a flick there's the old B&O remote I've got obviously the Saturn set up on the first the first SCART port it looks glorious but there you go guys until the next time, I'm Sega Zombie. Goodbye.